Hello everybody, welcome back to Wampleville. I suppose welcome back to Middle Earth. We've got ourselves, this is a figure I've had for a while. Strider, aka Aragorn. We painted this last night on stream, so I thought, mm, this might be interesting if we painted him up. Kind of appropriate. I mean, this is basically Strider, your Ammon Hen Strider here. Again, that was very fun. We painted that with the oils last night. We have already painted... Well, actually, we painted two Aragorns. Holy smokes, I uh, forgot all about that. So we actually have Ammon Sewell Aragorn. This is actually a 3D print here from the printing goes ever on. This is the old GW Mini. Well, just like this. Um, that's the old GW Mini as well. Obviously, you're not going to be doing the object source lighting on this Aragorn here. Going to keep it pretty simple. Probably do some brown matter here and then the coat sort of a greenish gray so yeah that's why we're, we're starting so late here and just trying to grab kind of a simple figure here uh and i'm just gonna yeah keep this pretty darn simple i mean maybe we'll do oh i actually have burnt wow that was burnt umber i just grabbed that was williamsburg burnt umber um no no it was here's williamsburg burnt umber over here okay that was that was still van dyke brown i grabbed and i thought wait a minute i think i done use some of that burnt umber not that it would be a terrible thing. So, Paint Licker, I hope that you had yourself a good Saturday. I don't know, maybe you had a chance to do some painting or something along those lines. Where's my end there? Is my indigo? It's actually just a piece of cork. Yep, that's just a piece of bulletin board cork right there. Just had to test it out. Hey, Megan and Queez. So, Queez, congrats on... Uh, that was two in one day. That uh, that night, that really changed everything, didn't it? And now, I, I of course, you know, you know that means the GW is going to have to change all the meta on you. Because, like, wait a minute, Kui's having success? Here, let's change his army. Or let's change something to make that not work so well. So, hopefully you got yourself a plan B once that inevitable change happens. Because, oh my gosh, you, you know that's how it's going to work. I can just see it. There's like a little special, uh, an alarm that goes off. It's like, wait a minute, Queez, Queez was able to win twice in one day. Uh, we we got to do something about that Queez. We can't have that happen. So, Megan, how are you doing? I thought I would just shoot you a message there. I thought I was going to be starting this, oh, a whole lot earlier. It's just, I, I, I can't even actually uh, describe to you, just in messages. <laughs> it, would, it would be impossible to describe. Ah, uh, so Queez has a new codex. Well, hopefully, Queez, there's uh Well, let's see. How often do they come out with FAQs for 40k? Because, uh, obviously, I think they just came out with a new set of uh, FAQs for for Lord of the Rings. Oh, that's right. At something o'clock, stupid o'clock in the morning, they're supposed to have a a Lord of the Rings reveal or something like that. Well, Quiz, I'm glad that you're going to be uh, solid for a while there. And Paint Liquor uh, hobbying is always, well, nothing wrong with hobbying, right? Especially on a on a fine, well, Sunday morning now, because actually it's it's Sunday morning here. Now, it's not quite for Lethal Shadows yet. Lethal Shadows, I think, still has an hour and a half yet for that. Hey, Valfera. Uh, sorry I didn't get the shoot you message. Uh, I'll just have to shoot you a message about, uh, <laughs> it, it could take a while, <laughs> about the last, say, four days. Um, it, it'll take a little while. Now, look, check this out. So those were the same primer. I just the homemade, I think I took a, actually a yellow and a black and mixed them together. Uh, the Steiner res like usual. But uh, check that out. That's not too bad. That was mostly Van Dyke Brown, a little bit of the... Yeah, a little bit of the bars black. Now here, I'm going to hit this with some of my... There, a little bit of the brown matter. Changes the color of that. Also, uh, see, it kind of darkens that down just a smidge. Let's hit these boots a little bit, too. Why not? Now, every th reference I see kind of shows the coat as having a bit of a greenish tone on it. Not so sure about that, but I don't know. We'll take this perline black, and we'll, we'll hit here. We'll just hit it in a couple of places to green that up just a little. So everybody, Lethal Shadows has about oh, 10,000 and counting STL files. 
So there's a pretty darn good chance if there's something you're looking for, you're going to find it at Lethal Shadows. Lethal Shadows also does the super, super high quality printing on really high quality resin. Uh, again, I that those I sent those off, but if you want to see uh, some of the previous Lethal Shadows gaming miniatures being painted, well, actually I have a base. Yeah, so a really nifty resin there, and of course there's no, uh, you don't have to worry about any kind of support dots or anything like that. Hey Clinton, how you doing? Nice to see ya. Yeah, Valfair, I'll, I'll shoot you some messages tomorrow if I get, uh, well, tomorrow's going to be kind of crazy too. Uh, I don't maybe after the stream tonight, Valfair, so you can see him tomorrow morning when you get up there. Now, uh, it, it has, uh, it's gone as I feared. <laughs> uh, obviously not according to plan, but it's kind of gone in a way that I'm not super surprised because I kind of predicted it. Ah, uh, oh, there we go. There's a testimonial. Ah, th there's yet another testimonial on stream. So Valfara is in possession of a Lethal Shadows print and can confirm the goodness. So again, we're giving that a slight greenish tint. That's about it. Thanks, Megan. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Now, this, and of course, if you check out the Instagram post, this was the last stream right here. This is Eowyn from the Glittering Caves. And these are uh, basing bits from Make It Epic. And I, I did the basing part of it on the More Than Dice podcast because they wanted to see examples of a diorama or the figure was still playable. So the figure is most definitely playable. But yet, you drop it right in here. Uh, look at that. Poof. Now I was going to put some magnets in there so that she stays in there. But for right now, we'll just stick our hand on that. Now, we painted that up on, hmm, what stream was that, Monday? I think it was Monday. Yeah, it, it's crazy. I mean, look at this. And, oh, by, by the way, this only took a half an hour because I did this on the media section of the More Than Dice podcast, and that's only from 8 to 8.30. So while we were doing the media section, I did that base. And again, uh, I think this was a three-hour stream. Yeah, this is about a three-hour stream right here. And uh, we did change this a little bit here. I kind of went a little bit more with the flowery type stuff instead of trees in front of it. Just seemed a little bit more appropriate. And the other reason I did that is because I think I have some flowers and foliage that can match right here on our Aragorn Ammon, or Ammon Hen Aragorn. <laughs> I'm not saying that 10 times fast. So this is again, that's just bulletin board cork. Seriously, that's all it is. There's a little bit of, I don't even know if I use any texture paste on there. I think it's just glue with a little bit of, uh, just a bit of Luke's APS ground cover. And that's probably about it. Nah, one, <laughs> there's Queen's Edge. Yep, 100%, baby. Well, Valfira. Oh, and Sarge, uh, so you were going to do a little bit of each, right? You were going to try both color schemes and have some fun with both of them on your uh, your, your pre-heresy marines there? Because, that, I mean, that sounds that sounds really good. Hey, Jay Wedge, nice to see you again. It's been, a, it's been a little while. Hope that you've been able to have some fun on a few things. How's about we have some fun just getting a little smidge of some skin tone on him. Again, we're just uh, letting the pre-glaze mix in with that. Kind of gives it a little bit of a grayish look, doesn't it? Just a hint. Another hand here. And I'm not... Yeah, see, that's definitely some kind of leather right there. And if I just let the Terra Rosa mix with the Perlene Black, get kind of a grayish brown. Hey, Waffles, how you doing? Ah, Dark Dan again. Dark Dan again. Says, don't be hasty. See, we we have it now. Don't be hasty. How you, how you doing there, Dark Dan again? And of course, uh, there's that right there. Uh, yeah, well, Jay Wedge, you can never go wrong with uh, <clears throat> with the printing goes ever on. 
And I, I really, 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 really love them and their stuff. Uh, so yeah, waffles. Uh, that is okay. So that's Sunday morning. Unfortunately, that is. Uh, well, I think they said seven o'clock Chicago time or something. Which means, <coughs> sorry, which means that's going to be somewhere. Well, yeah, that's going to be it's going to be tough to stay up for that. Uh, let's see. So, uh, lethal shadows. I have no idea. I'm just uh, I'm gonna have to wait for uh, for Lynn to give me the heads up on that, and obviously, well, Lynn, she's gonna be on her way back from Gen Con, so yeah, we'll have to just we'll have to wait to hear from uh, from Lynn, and we want to say thanks to Lynn and Gonzo, and then to everybody that contributed to the Surface Pro, the Surface Pro Fund, because that was successful. Yeah, Dark Danigan, that's that's just fine. Uh, I wasn't sure until literally the very last second that I was even going to be able to do that stream. So it's uh, totally, totally fine. Uh, even this one here, I really wasn't sure if I was going to be able to. So yeah, it was, it was just kind of like, well, maybe we can, maybe we can't. And... Uh, Let's see, well, we had been talking about doing Am and Hen for a while. And then I thought, well, okay, maybe uh, maybe we can give that a shot. I know that usually we're doing the 2D art on Thursday. Uh, instead, well, technically it was done on Saturday. Because I don't think the stream started till after midnight. Um, no, maybe maybe close to midnight. Oh, and Dark Dennigan, actually, I saw you. Well, you had something posted to your Instagram the other day there. If you wanted to post that in the chat, so that people could check that out, I'm sure that would be fantastic. Hey, Mtelles, everybody. Also, please give Mtelles a follow. Mtelles still ba basking in the glow of the recent convention success, doing lots of demos on the. Yeah, what the heck is that in his hand over there? Is that, I guess it's another pouch. On the MetaZoo stuff. Alright, let me see if now we can maybe get a little bit of a brown... No, 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 no. Maybe, uh, maybe some burnt umber and a touch of terra rosa, maybe. I don't know. That would be too close to the face. How about we do something like this here? Let's see what we'll, that's going to give us a little bit more of a reddish brown there. I thought about doing texture on this, but I think we won't do the texture. Let me see what happens with a little bit of the radiant violet in there too. I don't want this to be super light. Still want it to have that touch of the, the brown to it though, I think. Uh, I guess we'll have to make sure we have some gold there. We're also going to have to try and darken down the hair. Make that a little bit less gray. Uh, let's see. Uh, so Samwise. With the, f with the little flask. Uh, it's kind of interesting, J Wedge, because uh, it's not Kerr's look. Who just did a bunch of spiders? Oh, D was it Diwali that just did spiders? Oh, it was it was printing goes ever on just did spiders that's right hey landrest how are you doing uh valfera let me uh, i don't think i actually did uh valfera so hopefully you didn't uh, take off already let me do something here because we didn't do now i'm gonna go one more time we didn't do a film noir with this so let's let's see what happens wow okay Interesting. Uh, now watch what happens here. Check out the foreground. That's the stuff all in front of Ammon Hen and uh, that, what the warmth of that does. So you can see there, I mean, even at about 30%, it already starts to come forward. And then the intensity of it, the warmth of it comes forward. So big difference there. Uh, obviously much cooler color there. And then everything in here is kind of grayed down and also cooler colored. Uh, so I thought so, Dirk Danigan. And again, I apologize if I'm being spacey. 
Uh, pretty much haven't slept for the last three days or so. That's uh, not really what we were hoping for. Uh, needless to say. Oh, you know, see, I'm going to do this. I'm going to stick with this here, I think. I think I'm going to stick with this. That is the radiant violet here. But I tell you, uh, actually, now, Landrast, uh, have you had a chance to really, really, really dive into those newer contrast paints that you got to to do some direct comparisons and such? I know you, you kind of played with them a little bit. I wasn't sure if you really had a, a good chance to just really put them through their paces. Ah, ah Velfair, I'm glad that I caught you. Glad that I caught you. Sorry for being slow on the draw there. Apologize. And, uh, well, Valfira, I'll, again, I'll shoot you some messages, and hopefully maybe, maybe Monday I might be able to do a more normal stream if uh, the situation changes just a bit here. Uh, so that's going to that's gonna be uh, quite, the, uh, quite the project there, m -Tellies. Now, would that pretty much complete the army, what, you're, what you got listed right there? Oh, for, oh, for the Age of Darkness box, okay. Now, uh, actually, uh, Landress, did I see that there was one or two of them that were sort of fluorescent? Not really fluorescent, but kind of pretend fluorescent? It kind of seemed that way. There was one that was orange, which I keep thinking of Megan and the Fry Slayers. Well, when I saw that particular contrast paint, that's all I could think about was those crazy dwarfs and all their fiery stuff. I suppose a little bit more thinner. And this is where we just kind of say, the heck with it, and we're just going to throw in a bunch of these lighter tones right here. And uh, grab ourselves a blending brush of some kind. Which part of this doesn't have any paint on it? Well, we'll just say that part done. And <laughs> on September 1st through the 5th, there'll be a PAX. That, so again, please do not, don't miss those events. If you're going to them, uh, don't, don't uh, hesitate to stop by the Lethal Shadows booth. <coughs> say hi. Get some... Fantastic prints. Also, <laughs> it's like literally taking candy from a hobbit. Because that is, if the hobbit doesn't know it's candy. Once the hobbit knows it's candy, could be a little bit tougher to get that away from him. But uh, it's pretty darn easy to get those metallic uh, effects going. And that was uh, very simple, right? Just a few little colors. That's all it takes. Yeah, Dirk Danigan, um, like I said, I have those, again, they're not new contrast paints, they're just other ones that I never had before. Uh, they're, they're all open jars, they were rescues. Uh, I don't know, maybe I might even give them a try on that diorama that you just saw. That's the one with Radagast. Because I'd like to be able to paint the, or paint it and then do the foliage and stuff on that all in one tutorial video. Uh, hoping to maybe film that tomorrow night. Uh, so I do apologize for, well, the, the next Patreon video is going to be a little bit later than I would like. Again, it's just been quite the, the there's been no way to get anything done here. It has been quite lunatic asylum. So we'll try and get, the, again, Sunday night, something filmed there. And then see what we can hopefully film on Tuesday. Hey, Bina, how you doing? Uh, so waffles, uh, the one thing about the intensity inks, uh, I do really, I like those. They're, they're very nice. The problem is, much like the Army Painter, whatever they call those things, speed paints or something, they reactivate. I found that out the hard way when I went to do my snow and ice effects. So we'll just use this as an example here. 
So if I use those intensity inks on these rocks right here, that would bleed right into my snow. So whatever whatever colors you paint there, now they're not permanent. They will they can be reactivated and basically removed. So that's just something to think about with those Green Stuff World intensity inks. I I, I do like them. Uh, actually, I don't know if I like it better than contrast. They are pretty darn similar. But unfortunately, yeah, they have that nasty tendency to reactivate. Now, uh, waffles, I'd have to see if that's kind of the same formula, maybe, as the intensity inks. Because they have washes, they have intensity inks. It could just be kind of the same stuff, but just in a bigger jar <laughs> that uh, you're just supposed to dip stuff in. So it's possible. Again, I, I don't know anything about it. I haven't seen it myself in person. Now, Waffles, have you seen... I know sometimes they'll do uh, those little videos a couple minutes long. They'll, I think, put them on their YouTube channel or something. Now, usually they're so speed ramped you can't tell what the heck is going on. All right, that's enough of the green. I don't want to go too nuts so with that. So enough of the greens there. So, Bina, I hope that you're doing well. And, uh, we're, oh, there we go. Well, it's their height is there we go. Yeah, there's him. Ammon, Sewell, that's Aragorn. Oh, I'll still go later with the skin tone. You know what, here, let me get a little bit of the green. Speaking of which, on the skin tone. Then we'll try and get some more of his beard going. Just because. Now, let me see if I can lighten up. Hmm. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, that would have been probably a little too close to the skin color. We're going to make sure that we separate from that here just enough. Hey, Lamaness, how you doing? Uh, Lamaness, I'm going to shoot you a message to... Um, the problem was I just didn't know how to uh, phrase it for you. Just because yeah, I think you all you have some knowledge with all this kind of stuff, and I, I would kind of only be giving it to you second hand. Obviously, the person that would really need to write you about that would be Kathy, but uh, I'll, I'll shoot you a message tomorrow about kind of what's uh, been happening here of late, and, and maybe uh, you could have some insights on that. Uh, I know it's a uh, there's sometimes a weird question sometimes, but yeah, I was gonna shoot you a question about some things here and see if there's a maybe something you could say uh, well maybe try this or something along those lines again obviously the person who really should be asking would be Kathy but I uh, haven't been able to get her to do that oh, thanks thanks Lamaness appreciate that and I hope that you can add the, well, the hope that the printer is still going great and that you can have a, have a, some kind of a fun day on Sunday. Now, uh, Bina, it sounds like you're really having some, uh, some fun in the countryside. I think, ah, oh, that's right, yesterday on, on stream, or last night, we were talking about on stream, the, uh, Hanging out in the in uh, Germany and uh, painting a few cathedrals here and there with uh, with you and Doji and such. All the well, of course, talked about Ramstein and some of the other air bases. Now I don't want his hair to be blonde or anything like that. I just wanted to get a little different color in there. We'll, we'll go over the top of that later with something else that's a little bit more muted. But for right now, I just wanted to have something else there. Let me get uh, this one here. See if this is going to do any better there. Ah, thanks. Uh, thanks so much, Lamaness. You have a good one. Appreciate that. And uh, hopefully you have a fantastic Sunday. This should work, I think. Let's see if I can't give him a little bit lighter forehead. Maybe the uh, his nose... I have to do something with his eye, but his eyes are really, I don't want to say super deep set, but they're relatively deep set eyes. Ah, uh, Bina is going to reduce the stock of unpainted minis. Uh, 
Now, Bina, is there any particular uh, color scheme that you might be using on uh, as you reduce that stock of unpainted minis? Uh, Kutbowski, uh, glad that you could join us. Boy, this is uh, it's about as simple of a process as you can get here. The pre-glaze was just maybe Van Dyke brown and a bit of the Mars black. Yeah, it was Mars black. It was just about as simple as you could possibly get. But then we've gone over. Look at this. We changed it to greens, and we got the we got some uh, leather colors going on here. Now I got to give him some eyes. Ah, uh, so uh, Bina has a oh the is that oh, Escape from Goblin Town? Yeah, uh, Escape from Goblin Town. Now Bina, that has. It has the Goblin King and a bunch of goblins and the terrain, right? That doesn't have the scribe, does it? With the crazy contraption that he stands on or sits on or something like that. I don't remember if that's part of the Goblin Town set or if that's a Forge World thing or something like that. Now, of course, uh, it, it's very possible that people are going to have to maybe watch the, uh, the GW MESBG presentation which I guess is coming up in about six hours because it's at seven seven o'clock Sunday Chicago time. Ah, so it is a part of that set. Actually, Bina, I think I have the Goblin Town set. Uh, I'll, I'll look around here. I'll see if it's actually here. Yeah, if, if it's not, I'll, I'll uh, shoot you a message, let you know. But it might be here. I think somebody may have uh, gotten that uh, sort of almost as an exchange for some miniature painting because, well, Forge World was uh, a verboten thing to do for uh, commissions and that was uh, that was part of his bribe there, was that. But, you know, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of funny because I know that I'm pretty sure that Kurz look, maybe printing goes there, but I think Kurz look and maybe Diwali did the Goblin King. I know Kurz look did because I tried printing that one. And what was weird is that it was really small. And I know I had a tough time trying to print that. I should have just uh, done my own supports on that, I think. Well, I will just from now on. Well, that is if I ever get a chance to print again because that's not going to happen anytime soon. I think I've pretty much given up on printing until maybe September, October. All right, I'm going to have to start darkening some things down, and I might. This, again, is the Williamsburg Burnt Umber, which every time I see it, I keep wanting to say Van Dyke Brown because it's sort of close to Van Dyke Brown. Let's put it this way. It's... <laughs> it's probably darker than the Windsor Newton Van Dyke Brown. All right, so we're just we're trying to give him a little bit of a beard here, and then we can lighten that up from here. Just trying to get rid of that little hair that's kind of stuck in there. Hey, Warmaster, nice to see you. And Doji, Doji's in town. Doji, how you doing? Nice to see you again, as always. See, now, yeah, see, look at this. Now I can take that green. That's the uh, radiant green. Mix it with the burnt umber. Now we've got ourselves kind of a grayish green. So, Doji, nice to see you again. This is kind of fun to see this little scene. Ah, look at that. Especially when I get the foliage on him here. It's, it's really going to... I'll have to take some pictures with him in front of this thing. Uh, it shouldn't be too too difficult to do, I don't think. So, War Master, I hope that you're doing well. Mm, let me well, let me see what happens with this thing here when we try and do a little lighter gold type stuff on this. Uh, Indian yellow, really yellow pale. I'll have to get some violet into this as well. Yeah. Now, of course, hopefully, uh, 
Squeeze, you got yourself some games lined up for next weekend already so that you can crush more people's dreams with your with your Titan there. Uh -huh, so Doji, we've been able to separate Doji from more of Doji's money in the form of a, a few Windsor Newton products and Severus Blue. I have to tell you, uh, that, that Severus Blue, it's really nifty. Uh, and Doji, we did use it here because we wanted to test it out as a sky color. So that sky color is Severus Blue. And there's actually some Severus Blue in, in this stuff down here as well. So we did use the Severus Blue. Ah, Warmaster, that sounds very cool. That sounds like a lot of fun. Hmm, maybe this is this might be getting a little bit too light. Well, that's okay. We're going to be coming back in with a bunch of our dorks anyway in a little bit here. So, yeah, he is wearing sort of those half gloves there. Uh, let's just do something like this. So, we'll actually, we got Brilliant Yellow Pale and the Mars Black, which is going to make a very warm gray. So we're trying to get that away from skin color there as much as we can. A little bit of that warmer gray on the underside there. Now let's see if we can't uh, maybe do a little bit of indigo. Fantastic. Bot. I'll have to set an edge on this here. We still haven't gone with our lightest light yet on the sword. Still got to get some uh, magenta in there possibly. Um, 44, looks like 41 minutes, Doji. 41 minutes ago, this, it was exactly that primer color right there. Because I just, I primed up a, a couple of these guys here. And so that's what he looked like, uh, 41 minutes ago. It's the magic of oils, right? <laughs> right, Doji? Does it get any more magical than that? I just don't see how it does. Alright, there we go. There's our uh, dark on the other side of that. Again, we'll try and get some magenta in there. Let's see if we can also store a few little darks in the coat here. Not cloak, but coat. Same on some of the leather surfaces here. Let's darken those down. And then get rid of some of the yellow on there. So... Well, that's interesting. A uh, almost like a violet gray, kind of a violet gray there. Let's lighten this up a smidge. Now, on the More Than Dice podcast, if I'm able to do it, I've, I've just found this. They asked me to do um, basically earth tones, and these are Song of Ice and Fire Spearwives that never actually got painted. Look at, they're even magnetized. Spearwives, they're even magnetized, so never got a chance to paint these, so I thought, well, what the heck, maybe we'll try and paint up a couple of those tomorrow. Uh, so, Doji, this is, uh, this is our Aragorn right here. So, this is Ammon Sul Aragorn, or Ammon Hen. This is our Moria Aragorn. And this is from Printing Goes Ever On. This is the Ammon Sewell Aragorn. So look at Ammon Han, Ammon Sewell, Sewell Han. Uh, let's go back to our gray again here. Again, it has a little bit of the, a little bit of the violet in there. The, the Radiance, uh, now Doji uh, and Bina, you guys have all of the Radiance, or most of them, right? Now, is, uh, is there any of the ones, say like the red, the magenta, or the white, is there any of those that you kind of maybe found some uses for, just on, on your own there? Because uh, I haven't had a chance to use the white yet. I've used the magenta much more than the red. I'll, I'll try and find a few more tests for the radiant red. So we're just uh, trying to get a little bit of lighter color on the boots there, but without too much. 
all of my references show the boots as being pretty dark. Uh, so look at look at all that dark paint on the end. Look at that. It's almost like we're using this as a uh, as like a filbert brush. Yeah, doing the little dry brushy stuff over it. Ah, so Doshi has them all. Oh, uh, so this is from Diwali. This I think this was their Super Orcs, as they called it. So this is, I'm pretty sure this is their Urukai. Because, uh, well, here, look at this one. So my guess is that this is the Urukai Orcs. At least that's how I was going to use them, because I don't have any uh, actual Urukai. And until somebody does something that's, well, shall we say even more Urukai-esque, I'll just kind of use those as my Urukai. Uh, so Doji, uh, you know, actually I've been using the Radiant Yellow sort of as a substitute for Cadmium Yellow Light. It's not the same, but... Obviously, it's going to dry uh, significantly faster than anything with cadmium in front of it in the name, right? So that that's just kind of a plus. And again, I don't care about... I'm not trying to artificially enhance the drying time. I'm just trying to equalize the drying time. Now look at this. See, the radiant violet is actually lighter than the radiant green. So I'm actually lighting or lightening radiant green with radiant violet so that I can do some uh, see if I can do some highlights on his coat here but they're not gonna they're basically gonna be almost like greenish gray highlights with a hint of uh, violet ah it's a medium to mix with the transparent colors so Bina it's kind of funny it's almost like how we were just talking about the contrast paints so oh gosh Bina it sounds like you're saying that What's that one color, uh, Quinacrinol Magenta, that's so insanely translucent? Sounds like you could mix the, the uh, I almost said brilliant yellow pale, but the radiant white with that. Sounds, I guess that's how they intend for it, uh, wouldn't you say, Bina? Uh, uh, but it's, uh, unfortunately, with these crazy stream times, obviously, uh, we don't really get to see pun expected very much. Sometimes, well, sometimes we see Green Fairy again. It's kind of late, but I know uh, Green Fairy and Pun, they've been experimenting with a lot of the different colors, too. I, I do wish that I could stream at different times. Unfortunately, the these last four days, is the last three even, have been especially challenging. I'm just glad I got to do this. And the painting last night. I did not think I was going to get a chance to do that. Boy, the coat here. This coat. Uh, it's funny because I'm looking at a couple of reference pictures. of uh, This is more like the... I don't know what you say, the big resin figures of Aragorn that uh, that sell for, what, 500 bucks or something? That are, I don't know, maybe a foot tall or more? And I'm kind of using that as a reference there. Doesn't really show a whole bunch of texture on the uh, jerkin right here. Yeah, we could try to do that, but I don't think we will. Ah, so Doji, that's right. I remember you saying, well, that was on your on your Dothraki Screamer, right? That you tried that combo of the that we did for the skin of the asphaltum and the radiant violet it's really weird right doji that doesn't when you think about it you say there's no way that's going to work there is no way that's going to work but it kind of ends up working now this is the williamsburg burnt umber and uh, a smidge of the uh, fast matte white that's also from gamlin by the way uh, so radiant white is a good choice. Color is create radiant white formulator for painters who want a ref oh okay refrigerator white. Uh, the bright and opaque titanium dioxide. Uh, <laughs> it's got the safflower oil. Look out below. But uh, uh, so that uh, that makes sense, Bina. 
that that makes uh, a lot of sense. What I see there, what you what you wrote. Now, uh, Bina, was that from the gambling site, or is that from uh, some of the paint history or uh, info on the Dick Blick site? Because I'll have to. Uh, I've never actually been to the gambling website. Seriously. Actually, I've never been to the Williamsburg site or the Windsor Newton site. Uh, I, I guess we need to go there, maybe, and, and uh, check out some of that stuff. Let's see, how, I don't know, how dark do I really want that here to be? Oh, you know what? I'd also like to get some different colors in the darks here on uh, Aragorn. Ah, so that's the gamma description from their site. Well, uh, Bina, thanks, thanks for the heads up. Uh, I think well, once the Surface Pro is here, that's the kind of stuff that I can look for. It's on the phone; it would be practically useless. It would just be too small and too hard to find. Uh, it's not like the Surface Pro is a 50-inch monitor or something like that, but <laughs> still a whole lot easier. All right. Let's make ourselves a dirty magenta. Look at this, we got that naphthol red. Mix it with a little bit of the, I almost said Egyptian violet, but that's the radiant violet. Just a little bit of the magenta in there, and uh, possibly on this side, over there, and maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. Now, let me see. I still think we need to lighten up that jerk in a bit, but boy, I don't want it to get too rosy red. Ah, that's uh, and also I don't want it to look too much like a skin color. That will be challenging here. Let me see what we got here. Well, there's the radiant violet, a little bit, a touch of the naphtha red in it. Just a tiny bit. Maybe some more darks in the coat. I don't know. But again, this is a uh, 52 minutes. 52 minutes. That's it. Now, we haven't gotten any of the lightest light on the sword. See so what we can do with that. This is the Gamlin Fast Matte White. Now, Doji, uh, Bina, have you guys used... I think you guys have tried the Fast Matte White as well. It's interesting because they don't really use that much of it. There's really not that much. It's not like I'm mixing into every single color or anything like that. It really is more the radiance to get mixed in everything. Here, let's let's put some edges on the sword. We haven't done that yet. Let's uh, pop an edge on the sword over there. Obviously, this sword not going to be quite so dinged up like maybe a, one of those orc blades would be. Hmm. I'll use maybe indigo. See if we can get, get him some eyes here. And let's have a maybe... I don't know, I'm going to try and get a little bit more of a light color in the eyes first, though. Ah, uh, so Doji, much <laughs> much like how uh, M. Tellies is going to paint an entire... Uh, all the 18 chapters, Doji says, I want to buy more. I want... You have to show me more new things that I, I'm going to have to spend even more money to get because they're just too cool not to have. Ah, oh, geez, actually, Doji, you just reminded me. Uh, well, I'm going to have to shell out some coins tonight. I still haven't gotten the, the bunnies yet for the Radagast diorama. I still have to get those bunnies because we wanted to have uh, those guys jumping around Radagast in that diorama. So... Oh, wow, Bina, how did you like that? That's got to be pretty wild stuff, uh, wouldn't you say, Bina? I mean, it it does sort of uh, alter your way of thinking about white, for sure. I'm sure that it does. 
Alright, what well, that's uh eh, that was a little too late here, let's just uh do some of that over here. Well maybe lighten up his leg there. Well Doji, uh I'm 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 sure you'll be able to get back to it again. I I know you would love to just kind of uh be able to keep at it right, keep the keep the flow going. Oh, and Bitsron, uh, your uh, your gray there really worked out well. I mean, I'm, I'm hopefully it didn't take you too long, Bitsron, because I mean it added a ton. That little bit didn't seem like it took you very long. So yeah, that that really added a lot. Uh, I know we were talking about it there in the messages, but uh, now I can actually tell you in person. Uh, boy, Doshi has to uh, perform some heretical operations first, though, with uh, some acrylic stuff. So a little bit of heresy there from Doji. Well, this is not terribly heretical. This is going to be a little bit of fun blending there. We're just going to do a little tap, tap, tap. Just trying to soften the edge there. I think we're pretty good down here. Boy, Doji, you're not kidding. Uh, that's why I, I'm pretty much that that next whatever video it is that I do with the acrylics, it has to be with the contrast paints there, because at least it'll be somewhat, somewhat similar to the oils. Anything else would just be too darn weird. Now let me see if we can't get him some eyes there. Another one looking that way. So again, we're making a look over this way here. Uh, well, well, Bina, that makes sense. So marble dust, which, I mean, marble's pretty translucent. Sometimes I forget that. I mean, obviously not all marbles are the same. But there can be some pretty darn trans uh, translucent marble, wouldn't you say, Bina? So again, uh, this actually has a little bit of Prussian blue in it. We're trying to change up the color on this. If you remember what we did with our Eowyn, uh, and that was some of the Severus blue, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. See the, the Severus blue in there? That was, it didn't change the value of it. We were just looking to get a, a just a hint of a color change. That That's all. Just a hint of a color change. Now the hair, I think I've darkened it as much as I can. I don't think I can go any further with that. Or, no, that's a little bit of indigo, a little bit of the Mars black. Yeah, a little Mars black. So we could darken that a smidge. At Doji, and of course it can be, it can get a little bit wild when you are using the contrast paints like oils and you know mixing the lighter opaque colors with them they they can uh, start to act a little funny sometimes it mostly just depends on i guess the contrast color that you're using but uh Bina, that sounds really interesting with the trans transparent white there Now, uh, what is, is it Marco? Uh, I know he started to use more of the artist oils, and he actually started using Williamsburg. I don't know if it was was he using Gamlin too, but I remember I remember him talking about he he got himself at least a few Williamsburgs. Now I don't know if he kind of went all in like uh, well I don't know if we're all we're all in on Williamsburg. We're mostly in. <laughs> Especially if you count all of us together, we're sort of mostly in. Now, someone else is in. We got AD Creations. AD, how are you doing? And I'm glad you could uh, go ahead with your stream. Everybody, please give AD Creations a follow. Well, most of, I'm sure almost every one of you are, because, well, AD is here and, uh, kind enough to join us all the time we appreciate that so ad check this out we were talking about uh painting basically an ammon hen aragorn <laughs> I'll, 
Oh, wait, wait, wait. There. Ah, we got to get a picture like that. Just about like that. That would make a really fun picture, I think, right there. So this was our 2D painting that we did last night, also with the exact same oils we're using here. Literally the same oils. See this palette over here? Most of the paints that I used on that landscape, well, they're sitting on Aragorn now because reasons. And uh, AD, if you want to also, you know, I mean, geez, I don't, I don't really have to tell you if you want to post uh, a link there to some of the fabulous stuff that you do and let people see what that's like. Oh, I think people would really enjoy the heck out of that. Ah, uh, thank you so much. What's I appreciate that. Thank you. Wow. Well, that ice is going really, really quick. Ah, uh, so what's good? Thank you so much. I appreciate that. So what's good? Did you get to see our Ammon Hen Aragorn in front of Ammon Hen? That was so much fun. Uh, I'm going to definitely have to take a picture like that. Uh, let's see. Now, AD, wh when you're lighting up your box there, are you just using, you know, the most, gosh, what, what's the expression, like the most bland, generic, neutral kind of light, or have you ever lit in some, lit in? Wow, there's a new word. I just made me a new word. Have you ever illuminated? one of your boxes with maybe some different colored lights just for the effect of it obviously it wouldn't really show the actual you know the the colors of your box but just with the really interesting design that you have uh, to it and stuff uh just some kind of interesting wild two different color lights you know one from one direction one from another i'm just visualizing your box looking really nifty I mean, it looks fantastic under any light, but I'm just kind of visualizing it under some really interesting uh, different type of light. Now here, see, that's that's just not right. But I'm looking again at the giant reference picture here. Oh, it's from Weta Workshop. Uh, I, it doesn't say how big it, or does it say how big it is? Let me scroll something here. Uh, I'd have to check the website. It's got to be huge. Thing must be about 10 inches tall. You know what? Maybe I'll use that down here on his boots. It's got a little bit of the yellow in it. Touch of yellow there. Yeah, let's bring this out here a little bit. Touch more over there. Might need to get me some more darks and the folds right there that's possible also I have a mind to do something like this take a little bit of this Indian yellow a little Indian yellow see if we can't reflect the hilt of that sword onto our sword blade I guess we need a little more opacity to that Ooh, that might be too much will it be Maybe not. So obviously Armored Wolf has one more day to go yet at uh, Gen Con. So for all the Europeans that are going to be at Gen Con tomorrow morning, well, no, in about, I don't know, eight hours, no, eight and a half hours when the dealer's room opens, uh, please visit booth 2713. That is, that's where you're going to find Armored Wolf. Go there, please support Armored Wolf, obviously, as much as you can. Because uh, we want to help out Armored Wolf as well. Well, Doji, you have yourself a good one. Have yourself a good one. And uh, thanks so much, Doji, as always, as always, for hanging out with us here. I don't know. Eh, see, that's... Get a little bit too much towards the yellow. Let's neutralize that a little bit. Yeah, AD, uh, wow. And, and of course, uh, I don't know, Megan, uh, I don't know if I ever told Megan this story of the earliest days of eBay. This was uh, some of the very first 
miniatures that we ever put up on eBay back in 2001, 2002. And I made a, a backdrop for them, like a sculpted backdrop. It was a wall with a tree, and I did... And I don't know how the heck I did it, but somehow I had two different color lights. This was back in 2001. I mean, it wasn't like today where you have a bazillion different LED lights of every color that you can program with your phone and stuff. Yeah, nothing like that in 2001, or even, well, a couple of years ago. But people said, as much as they love the pictures, they said, well, I want to see what it really looks like. As much as uh, those pictures really are fantastic and they look great, I want to see what it looks like. So that I can really understand you wanting to have just that total representation of the actual box. Now that's, uh, I tried setting up a little bit of that, uh, the, the backdrop. Just couldn't get the right backdrop for it. I tried all the nifty sort of printed backdrops. First of all, they weren't big enough. So what we'll try and do is uh, we'll get try and get those uh, prepped up. Uh, I think I want to do some basing videos with those because uh, they're kind of the skirmish slash multi-base. Uh, in some ways, more like Song of Ice and Fire. Just a, well, I can't say a whole lot bigger because the Song of Ice and Fire is relatively big. But the bases are pretty darn large. And they're pretty much in rows as opposed to uh, uh, the squares. I mean, not like every conquest unit is that way. We also have that one special character. Uh, again, uh, I maybe as as this week goes along, things won't be quite so insane. I'll be able to get those prepped. Maybe I'll I'll give it a shot. I was surprised at just how fast that second box got here. It literally took less than, I don't know, maybe five days. The first one I was waiting three months and never got here. It's just gone. Uh, that was that was definitely a FedEx thing. That was not a Conquest, of course. They tried getting them here. All right, see, this does not have any real... Lights on. I'm just going to maybe stick with the brilliant yellow pale for the most part to highlight this gold over here. Ah, let me let me see what happens here. Right, see this right where it meets the sword. Poof, right there. Let's get rid of that bit of fuzz. Ah, guitar spider, how you doing? Nice to see you again, guitar spider. I'll show you. It's, I just this is never going to get old. This is absolutely never going to get old. But I have to show this because this is such a fun little scene. This is what we painted last night. I think we got it set pretty good. Boom! There's there's Aragorn from Ammonhead. So we we'll have to definitely get a picture of this these two things together right here. That's going to be really a blast. So power elephants, uh, now hopefully you're not, well, I'm sure you're missing something because you wouldn't have found out that that thing wouldn't start if you weren't trying to head somewhere. So hopefully that somewhere was not work or a super important thing and that maybe you can kind of take, takes it a little bit of time and getting that thing going again and not have to worry too much. Now let me see if I can lighten up his chin here. Oh, why not? I'll just I'll go with some of the Terra Rosa here. Oh, not, uh, don't want to do too much. Also, his lower lip. Let's see if we can... Maybe not quite so dark. I mean, it's not like he... He has the fuzz there. He doesn't really have the full-scale beard, necessarily. The mustachio there. Let's throw a little bit of lights on that. Now, thanks, Guitar Spider. It was uh, 
that was so much fun. I guess I'm going to have to paint... Oh, you know what? This is what we'll have to... We'll have to paint another Ammon Sewell. Because remember, we painted Weathertop before with the little hobbitses. But we'll have to paint another Ammon Sewell, and then we'll have to have our flamey Aragorn crashing the party just a little bit there. That that might be fun. So, Queez, I know you're probably already taken off, but I hope you have yourself a good night. And again, so glad that that night is uh, blowing up the meta in your store, your area there. It's about time. How <sighs> much lighter do we want to go with some of this stuff on the fabric? Not too much lighter. I was thinking uh, some of the tall foliage from Green Stuff World might just work on here. Do I have a little example of that somewhere here? Ah, here it is. How? Ah, see, look at that. Now I would prefer. I think there's a there's like a yellowish one. Yes, we've used the. That's what I want to use on here. So this uh, tall foliage. You know, I'll just rip out a piece of it. You can see. I've done a whole bunch of basing demos, but but see that uh, it's nice and. Well, it's tall, pretty decent sized little leaves for something like this, I would say. So that should work pretty well. Let me see what we got here as far as uh, some light for our greens here. Now, maybe, yeah, you know, maybe on this code here, I don't know. Let's see if we can maybe do some texture on this. Do something to to spice this thing up. Now there's a whole bunch of folds over here, so that'll make texture on there kind of kind of wild. But it would also be very different from these two bracers here. Boy oh boy, I remember at the Renaissance Fair, I had two bracers made up from it. I really did enjoy those. Those were fun. Because I had a booth there at the Ren Fair, and obviously you had to be uh, appropriately dressed. They were much more strict with us. You had to do the, not just the, the accent, but it has to be had to be Elizabethan from well, basically 1603. There's an awful lot of folds on the coat here, so I'm trying to maybe keep that to a minimum. All right, I think this could use some dark right here, and I, th I might just use indigo. Yeah, we're not going to use a dark brown. We have we have plenty of browns. I might also throw in a little indigo on the uh, shadow area of the coat here. So there. Yeah, remove a little bit of the hi highlight right there. Uh-huh, and this too. Well, let's strengthen this edge. We're not just doing a dark there. That's actually indigo, which is a very dark blue. And the whole idea behind the indigo is to... That's a reddish-brown. The indigo is not just a dark color. It's it's a cooler color, which is going to make that little bit of slightly warmer brown come forward. It should. Knees coming out this way, right? But it, it just makes it a little bit more interesting on something that you would say is a limited or muted palette. Ah, I just I, I never like the whole limited phrase because it well it just sounds like everything is limited. Let me see what happens here. This is something we haven't wow, you know we haven't done this too much. That would be your Indian yellow comboed up with the I almost said Fanchon red. We've done that. But the naphthol red on our gold there. Just get a nice sword again. That looks like an amber color right there. See it on the sword hilt there? So if you check out my, my YouTube channel, you'll be able to see my bolt action battle reports there. It's basically you're just you're playing a game of, well, anything, 40K, Necromunda, Warcry, AOS, anything like that and you're filming the process 
Sometimes it can be more instructional. I tend to like those more, especially that's kind of how I learn game systems is by watching those type of video reports. Sometimes they get a little bit too, a little bit too meta, a little bit too focused on the tournament stuff. And that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. For me, I, mean, I, I don't mind watching those once in a while because I can just sort of, I don't know, keep a keep appraised of what the heck is going on in that uh, meta there. But I do prefer more like the battle companies type uh, battle reports and that sort of thing. Now, of course, uh, Clinton Hobbies, the, the thing that I want to do is I add, this is some of the Severus Blue, by the way. I want to use the War of the Ring board game as a kind of a strategic map, strategic campaign generator. Look at the difference between that side and this side. See, there's not much going on here, but look at what that sky blue just added right there. I'm going to have to get me some of the green into that because that's just, not only is it too dark there, I think that's a little better. Let's try it again. I, I don't want this to be a full-on beard or whatever. Oh, duh, here he is. <laughs> uh, here he is. So there's our, uh, there's our Boromir. Says, so look, look, guys, guys, come on, man. The, look at how close to the cliff edge those hobbits were, man. It's like a strong breeze or a slight push. We'll push them right over the edge. And, and you know, the ring was just laying over here. I said, boy, this is a bad idea. Leave something like that laying around. So uh, I picked it up. What's wrong with that? <laughs> I was looking all over the place for Boromir. He was right there. Well, that's just me being spacey. I'll leave that that level of dark there. I th do I want to lighten up the uh, neck here a little bit? Okay, let's do that. Uh, we're actually using some of the color from the jerk in there. Yeah, uh, no, I'm not going to try and do any reflected light there. A hey, space nifty, space nifty. How the heck are you doing? You know, space nifty. Uh, some other folks would say it sounds shifty, right? Uh, I think they would say that uh, Boromir might have been up to some shenanigans. But Boromir says, "Oh, jeez, I care not. It's just a little thing." that can, I can, like, uh, I don't know, rule Middle Earth with. He's like, wait, what? What'd you say? He's like, oh, nothing, nothing. Uh, I would just say, how cool is Middle Earth? It's like winter time, right? It's, it's cold out there. Ah, oh, there we go. So, uh, everybody, oh, that geez, Rottweiler, sorry about that. Jeez Louise, I totally forgot about all of your, sorry about that. So, everybody, uh, please, when Rottweiler posts those links, not just to the Etsy, but also to the Instas. Please, uh, not just follow Rottweiler, but also, uh, well, maybe uh, maybe snag a thing or two from Rottweiler, because you know that would be uh, that would be kind of nice. And, and again, I think uh, well, we're gonna get the bunny files from Make It Epic with uh, AD Creations, and I do think. There was one of those uh, very nifty seamed Lehman Russ 3D prints, or STL files, sorry. I think we might have to finally snag one of those. Because at some point, we'll finally get to print again. Uh, Space Nifty just getting home. Uh, what is it here? So it's 222. Obviously, uh, let's see, Germany... Is it 922 or 1022? I think it's 922. I don't think I don't think it's eight hours ahead. And obviously, uh, well, we were talking about daylight savings time not not eliminated yet in the EU. I guess it was supposed to, but uh, the whole daylight savings thing still still exists, I guess. Hi, Welters, how you doing? So, hi, uh, as promised. Right, Ammon, Hen, Aragorn. And uh, <laughs> we've been showing him off next to the Ammon, Hen painting. That uh, 
I'm telling you, it's never going to get old having all these different little uh, puppet show backdrops. Well, it won't for me. For you guys, maybe it will. Uh, so Guitar Spider says it is 922 in Germany. So, so seven hours ahead. I've actually kind of lost my, my spidey sense with Melbourne. I always thought that Melbourne was 13 hours ahead of us. But, the, but then uh, Dano always confuses me, and he comes in with uh, Brisbane time. Uh, boy, I tell you what, Heinwelters, I would really love, and, and of course, well, let's see. If we do it in Celsius, maybe somewhere between 2 and 5 degrees Celsius and sunny all, all year long. No summer, no fall, no spring, just... A nice crisp somewhere between 2 and 5 degrees Celsius and sunny all the time. That would be fabulous. Uh, you could just go ice skating on your swimming pool. You need a large pool or very tiny ice skates. One or both of those things. I'm going to try and do a little bit more here on his boots. I just... Wow, wow, there actually is a picture here of his boots. Well, they're just kind of muddy. Ooh, uh, let's try this. Let me see what happens here. Uh, mm, that may not be... Ah, you know, that might just work. That is the Williamsburg Burnt Umber. Ah, what the heck, a touch of the Indian Yellow. Let's see what happens here. Let's see if we can... I mean, we could spatter up his boots too, but... Maybe this will be interesting if we do this. Uh, I might use some of the radiant yellow to lighten that up. So I'm going to get rid of that, replace it with this. Maybe some mud spatters on his coat as well. Yeah, let, let's uh, keep hitting it with this. Um, one more there. A bit more over here. And uh, maybe some on the bottom of his coat. Yeah, that, that makes it. I think it's going to make it look a little more interesting. I mean, we could literally just spatter it. Hey, we got spatter brushes. Oh, look, we just made one last night. So this is one of our craft brushes, right? It starts getting really beat up like this. I just took a scissors. I sliced this. We could use it as a stippling brush or as a spattering brush. So everybody, please check out Rottweiler's current work. And then, of course, Rottweiler, uh, don't f uh, please be putting in your uh, your uh, Etsy link, too. Please do that. So, yeah, AD, I was just about to say, you know, somewhere between, well, technically I like it between 25 and 35. So that would be what? Maybe about minus 1 degree Celsius? Maybe, maybe minus two Celsius, something like that. Ah, that would just be that would be absolute paradise. Sunny and crisp all year long. Again, some folks might not be as delirious about that as I am, but I would take that. Now I. I don't think I would want Arctic Circle, you know, sunny all day long, <laughs> like 20 hours of sunlight a day. That would be uh, a bit confusing, but all right, little, little, yeah, let's do a little mud spatter uh, in here too. Just a little bit there. Why not? How about the inside? Can you see this here? I think you can. Inside of his coat there. Uh, so Rune Forge Painting. Please check out that Etsy store there. So Rottweiler, I'm glad that that is just going absolutely bonkers. So everybody, please go check that out and make it go even more bonkers. So that, so that Rottweiler, in between streaming and everything else, has absolutely no time to do anything else. Just make him really, really, really busy with that Etsy page. 
Alrighty, now that we've got, I guess, the darker mud in there. Let me see if I can toss in a couple of lighter ones here. This would be the dried mud. Uh, actually, now, Rottweiler, uh, could uh, could you do me a favor and send me the, the pictures via Instagram? I'm just uh, Wapelius on Instagram. If you could shoot me the pics that way, that would be sensational so that I could uh, check them out myself. Actually, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be able to see them here. It's not really set up for me to click on links or anything. But if you could shoot me an Insta message, that would be fantastic. And then I could really uh, get a chance to see it. Uh, any more? Uh, maybe, maybe over here. I mean, it, whoops, that's too much. Blending brush, no problem. Take some of it away. Now, so, so Rottweiler is going to go into dad mode. Ah, so the ah, so having that sleep over and they're still awake. Now, now Rottweiler, I think you yo, you were around, weren't you, when we had the uh, the re instant nap time? It was basically a mace version of uh, what is that, uh, Nyquil? Yeah, it's got a range of about an area of effect about four feet, and it can drop like a teen well it can drop a teenager at about two feet and anybody under the age of 12 it can pretty much take them down from about six feet away and the obviously the area of effect is uh, broader the further away the target is so it's uh so it's 3 30 a.m for rottweiler it's 2 30 a.m here so rottweiler uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, th I don't know, you know, who says you can't lace a few candies with some NyQuil? I mean, it's nutritious, it's got, I'm sure there's some kind of vitamin in there. It's good for the kitties, they need their sleep, you're doing them a favor. If it also means that you get a little more sleep, well, that's just a side benefit that you uh, had no interest in. Yeah, it's not like you did it on purpose or anything. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Why are you awake? We watched a lot of Iron Man and Captain America. Boy, I swear, I gotta find me those uh, those old MCP figs that we painted. Uh, those were in the YouTube Live days. I think I might have painted one on stream. I don't know. I do have other MCP figs, but uh, I think it's gonna be a while before I can get to any MCP stuff. As Landress says... He just gnashes his teeth and says, yeah, of course. Of course you're not going to get to that. Where's my Indian yellow? Ooh, it's a little bit reddish. Not a radish. What's happening here? That needs, oh, not just a little bit of reflected light, but geez, we got to actually use this. Crazy as it sounds, we're actually using our radiant green here. A little reflected light, basically the ground. That's what we're looking to reflect here. Now, of course, this, you know, the sword hilt here, a little bit mangled because, well, old miniature. So this is not just an old miniature. Most likely about 21 22 years old uh, possibly 22 I don't think it could be more than 22 years old well technically could be because I'm sure they were making the miniatures before 2001 our AD you have a good night and thanks so much AD I appreciate that everybody please give AD creations a follow and AD I know you already posted it a couple of times but uh, maybe as we add some more warm green to the coat here Maybe toss your uh, fabulous pictures there of your incredible uh, box sculpt. Gotta let people see that. So here we basically took, a, oh gosh, the tiniest amount of Indian yellow. We mixed it in with a radiant green. We have some cooler greens here. We also remember have the radiant green mixed with the radiant uh, violet to create our uh, radiant gray. Here, a little different color of green. 
Uh huh. So M. Telly is just heading out of the uh, the Landrast Hotel or Chateau Landrast. Uh, actually, oh, M. Telly's uh, also. Everybody, please give M. Telly's a follow. And M. Telly's, if you want to post some Instagram stuff, and maybe uh, where your next uh, your next convention event, where you might be doing some heavy duty meta zoo demoing and that sort of thing. Look at that. See a little bit of warm green right there. Ah, uh, so there, everybody. Uh, uh, M. Telly's just about to post a link there of what he was doing again at the uh, Landrast Game Store. A.K.A. Landrast House. So everybody, please go check that out. That's uh, M. Tellies, and also please give M. Tellies a follow, along with AD Creations. So oh, actually, M. Tellies, do you, uh, do you know when your next stream might just be, so people know? And there's a the uh, some Impy, and Impy by M. Tellies. Somehow got to lighten up those straps there, and then oh, good grief! This is just not quite doing it for me right here on this bracer. I I don't want to have too much of a highlight there, but also trying to think maybe there's uh, some cuts and chips or something like that on that bracer. Uh, so, Collecticon in Long Beach oh, for some card fixing. And again, that is, that's the Meta Zoo. Uh, Mtelius, geez, how long, uh, Mtelius, have you been demoing and uh, rocking the Meta Zoo stuff? It's been a little while that you've been doing that. Ah, look at this, see? We use that yellowish green. Look at this. This is a kind of a reddish brown. What did we use to highlight it? Literally a yellowish kind of crazy green there. Uh, yeah, M. Tully's, uh, it, but it can be difficult, right? I mean, uh, as, as fun as, as Twitch can be, I, I, I obviously have a blast. There are, there's life things. There are those pesky life things, too, that can make it a little bit difficult to stream as often as we would probably want to. Ah, okay. Yeah, see, there's, there's too much of a chipped edge in there. I'm going to go back to my indigo. Uh, we're just going to take that uh, chip away. We're going to reforge the sword a little bit. There we go. Bam, something like that. Smidge of dark over here. Why not? I will. Well, it, well it's going to be a little bit more gray than it was before. But I got a little bit of that red. That's the same. That's a brown matter mixed with naphthol. That's a nice little combo right there. I'm starting to wonder if uh, the naphthol red and... Maybe the brown matter could almost be like an alizarin color. Oh, it would actually dry faster because, for whatever reason, brown matter just tends to dry faster. Naphthol red does not dry fast. Well, kind of like all reds. So, good night there, M. Tellies. You have yourself a good one. Uh, as always, great to see you in. And uh, I think Leah Landress was showing me pictures of the last uh, game night that you guys had there, or hobby night. Either one or both is fantastic. I'm going to see... Uh, mm, boy, what I'm trying to think about is the landscape around them. See, we just got this... Uh, right here. Oh, what I want to do is add some tall foliage that's going to be more like this right here. And uh, that's why I, I like this uh, the idea of this red here, because I could play off of it very nicely. Let me see if I can get some of that on this sword blade here. We have a little bit of the dirty magenta. Let me see if I can't darken this down. So that, again, is the uh, brown matter. Ooh, tiny touch of that naphthol red. And then we're just going to go right there. Yeah, something along those lines.
whoops uh, too dark ish well, it, it kind of depends if there was if I uh, had something more identifiable around him and say that's okay but we're gonna back off of that just a smidge here all right I'm just taking that down a little bit and then yeah okay that's more oh see that we have that nice little light point there this is our indigo here that's basically brown matter with a little bit of red look at over here on this side we've got that severus blue going down into some van dyke brown a little severus blue over here i think that could use a little more something what that something is don't know yet but like before try something we like it yay we don't no biggie uh, i'm not going to use the severus i'm going to go with maybe a lightened up here radiant turquoise that's another gambling color because that's that's too much of a with all the nifty little things we've got here light dark light uh, i think we need to have something more than just a really light to dark transition there's not a lot of color there now there's see we didn't really change the lighter dark of it but there is more of a color there this I need to lighten this somehow. Now it is sort of facing the sky. Don't think I want blue there. Well, <laughs> color goes somewhere. Must go everywhere. How's this? Don't know if this is going to work. This is actually that crazy light green. See what happens with this. Uh, not, not too much though. See, I don't want to wipe out that dark that's there. Ah, boom. See, we use our blending brush. Poof. That's under control. You could almost think of it like it's reflecting some of the sword hilt there. Now, of course, there's uh, mostly just leather here. This is about the only area where we could really do some of the heavy-duty uh, reflections. Reflected light. Not so much out here. Nah, none over here, but uh, obviously this is the one place. Well, of course, that's what makes this cloth slash leather. That's what makes this metal, right? That Those hard edges and that reflected light. Doesn't matter if you're doing this or TMM. And here's our bust. This is from White Wolf Tavern. This is one of my tutorial videos. It's so symmetrical. We, we cut them in half down the middle. One side is the, is the true metallic. One side is the non-metallic. And we did it to show that the reflected light, the highlights, the edges, the shadow, all that stuff is the same. doesn't matter whether it's TMM or non-metallic. Now, we, we do both of them here. I just finished up an army painting series where everything is true metallic metal and freehand and lots of red. Now, obviously, when we were doing our commission stuff, as I add a little more texture to his sleeve over here, Well, the, the photography and that sort of thing, it, it kind of is limited when you're trying to do the, the true metallic. So most of the time, and also having to match previously painted figures, I never got a chance to do true metallic metals. But thanks to the Patreon page and, of course, the Twitch channel, I finally got a chance to do it. And I've done whole armies. Uh, my Minas Tirith is all, uh, it's all true metallic stuff. Even, uh, oh, actually, my Rivendell Elves, also true metallic. And you can bet there's tons of reflected light, on, uh, even though it's true metallic. There's lots of reflected color. If they got a red robe, and the metal is right next to that robe, whether it's armor or a sword, and you don't reflect any of that red, it will not be convincing as metal, because your brain is trying to tell you, yeah, that should be shiny. Where's the reflections? And there are none. I'm going to uh, see it. That's, uh, that's a nice little leading edge right here. I just put a couple lighter dots on that. I started to put a little texture stuff there. Gosh, what about on his... Let me see if I can very, very faintly... 
Jeez, beard texture on a guy that's only an uh, inch and an eighth tall? He may not even be the inch and eighth. Because uh, look at... Uh, oh, yeah, he, he kind of... This is the printing goes over on Aragorn, and he towers over one of these older figures. What about this one? About the same height. Obviously, the face looks a little bit different. He's a little... This is beefy Aragorn. This is a svelte... Aragorn over here. So I'm trying to see what I can do here with these uh, warmer greens. See what we can do with this here. Again, looking for a smidge of texture here. We also try to put a little bit of uh, mud there. Mud spatter on the bottom of the coat. Such as it is. Lighten this up a bit too. Yeah, there we are. 